Welcome to another one of our sim challenges at Flight Insight. Over the next few videos, we're going to go through an entire IFR flight from planning through execution and take you along for the ride in the sim. For the full series, check out the page on our website linked here or in the description. You could play along with us on your own in the sim or fly the real thing if you're nearby. For this sim challenge, we're in America's Dairyland, flying from Waukesha, KUES, to Eau Claire Chippewa Valley Airport, KEAU, in our IFR GPS equipped Cessna 172. We asked you for route ideas, and this one was recommended by the appropriately named Badger Pilot. Every successful flight begins with good planning, and we'll be going through all our pre-flight planning in this video. Once again, we'll be leaning on foreflight heavily for our pre-flight information. We'll start by entering our airport pair in the flight box above. KUES is our origin, and KEAU is the destination. It's a 178 mile direct flight to the northwest. If we look at the route, we notice it traverses some special use airspace over Volk Air Force Base. Let's tap in the area to find out more. The Volk East MOA starts at 8,000 feet, so we may be able to file a route that goes beneath it, but this is only one half of that special use airspace along our route. We could see the other MOA to the west of that. This one starts down low at 500 feet and goes to almost flight level 180, so we'll definitely be in that if it's active. If we look at the profile view of this route, we can see the MOAs in the shaded area and that an altitude of 6,000 will cut right through it. It'll be best to plan around the MOA if possible. We'll leverage the route advisor to help with that. As we can see, there are a number of routes that take us to the south of those MOAs. Here's one that keeps us clear and doesn't add too much distance to our route, only about an extra 30 miles. It's a mix of GPS fixes and VORs and doesn't involve flight along any airways, so we'll need to dig a bit to determine a good altitude. We see a number of Arocas, off-route obstruction clearance altitudes, in the 3000s of feet. This doesn't mean that any altitude above this will be sufficient, so let's add a buffer of a few thousand feet to it. For a westerly flight, an even thousand altitude like 4 or 6000 is appropriate. 4000 is a bit close to these Arocas, so we'll file 6000 feet. A look at the profile view again shows that we're clear of those MOAs, and besides our origin and destination airports, we'll be in Class E airspace. Not that we need to worry about busting Class B through D since we're on an IFR flight. We've set the weather for this flight to have a broken layer of clouds at 1000 AGL. A bit low, so let's plan an alternate. Let's say the ceiling is forecast to be slightly higher to the west, so we'll pick South St. Paul a large enough airport with plenty of options for arranging transport or getting a hotel for the night if we have to. How do we know we can use South St. Paul as our alternate? Let's look at approaches in the procedure tab on the airport page. The RNAV 3-4 seems best suited for us. This is considered a non-precision approach for the purposes of alternate planning, even with the LPV minimums available here, and that means the weather forecast needs to be at least an 800 foot ceiling with two miles of visibility. Now, there is a little black triangle with an A in it up in the notes, which means there are non-standard alternate minimums. Let's look those up. We go to the Arrivals tab this time and tap Alternate Minimums. We'll want to swipe over to our airport, South St. Paul, and see that for the RNAV 3-4, the weather requirements for Cat D aircraft are 800 feet with 2.5 miles of visibility, so a bit higher, but not applicable to us in our Cat A Cessna. Now, Wisconsin benefits from some pretty flat terrain, so obstacles on departure might not be a big deal, but we still want to look at departure procedures for Waukesha. We pull up the airport page, tap Procedure, and then Departure. There are two departure procedures, the Acra 5 and Euchre 6. If we were to look at those, we'd see that they're for jets at higher altitudes. But let's look at the Takeoff Minimums page. Again, we swipe to our airport, Waukesha. There are no departure procedures listed here. Standard departures are at 200 foot nautical mile climb gradient with no turns prior to 400 feet above the departure end of the runway. Part 91 doesn't have takeoff minimums, but for 121 or 135 single engine, they would be at least one mile of visibility. If we're using runway 10, the minimums go up to a 400 foot ceiling with two and a half miles of visibility. If the weather doesn't meet that, we can still take off, we just need to go at least a 316 foot nautical mile climb out to 1,400 feet. This won't be a problem in our Cessna climbing out at VY. Let's set up some frequencies now. We'll pull up the taxiway diagram for the airport. That notum up top mentions runway end lights out of service or runway 36, by the way. The ATIS for Waukesha is 118.87. We'll set that in our COM2 and listen in. 
here's what that will say. This is a Class D towered airport. The clearance and ground frequencies happen to be the same here, so we'll tune to that on 121.6. Tower is 123.7, that's on COM1 standby. Let's also put our destination AWOS 126.02 .02, on COM2 standby for later. We'll be requesting our clearance now. We'll pull up a scratch pad with a craft acronym to keep the clearance elements straight and make our request. Waukesha Clearance, Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango, request IFR to Chippewa Valley with information Golf. November 518 Foxtrot Tango, Waukesha Clearance, cleared to Chippewa Valley Airport via radar vectors to Hawken, then as filed. Maintain 3000, expect 6000 one zero minutes after departure. Departure frequency 125.35, squawk 4255. Clear to Chippewa Valley, radar vectors to Hawken, then as filed, maintain 3, expect 6, departure on 125.35, squawk 4255, 518 Foxtrot Tango. November 8 Foxtrot Tango, read back correct, advise ready to taxi. Roger, 8 Foxtrot Tango. So we have our clearance. We can begin putting the route into our GPS, the Garmin 530. We'll start by hitting FPL. Next, push the right knob to bring up the cursor. With the inner knob, we'll start spelling out our departure airport, K-U-E-S. We use a keyboard in the sim, but you'll be using the inner and outer knobs to input the waypoints. We go through all the fixes along our assigned route, and then the destination, K-E-A-U. We'll put our assigned squat code, 4255, into the transponder and make sure it's on altitude mode. We're not going to rely too heavily on the autopilot, but we'll put our initial assigned altitude into the CAP 140 autopilot, 3000 feet. We should also make sure the barrow setting in that matches what's set in our altimeter and the reported measurement on the ATIS. So as we said, we're already on the ground frequency, so we could just request our taxi instructions with them. Even though it's the same frequency, we'll still want to do a full call, including who we're talking to, who we are, where we are, and what we want. We can omit the ATIS information since we already told them we have golf. Waukesha Ground, Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango is at the terminal. Request taxi for IFR departure. Cessna 8 Foxtrot Tango, runway 10, taxi via Echo Alpha. Runway 10 via Echo Alpha, Cessna 8 Foxtrot Tango. So we'll start out on the taxiway. While we're taxiing, we'll want to do some IFR instrument checks. We could do this while serpinating, gently moving left and right down the taxiway. The airspeed indicator should be zero. The AI should be erect and not moving. The altimeter should be within 75 feet of our field elevation of 911. The turn coordinator should move with the turn. The ball should swing opposite. The directional gyro and compass should indicate the direction of the turn. And the VSI should read zero, or if it doesn't, we'll note the error. Now, we're at the hold short for runway 10. We've run our before takeoff checklist and we're ready to go. We switch over to tower and set the departure frequency we were assigned 125.35 into standby. Waukesha Tower, Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango, shorter runway 10, ready for IFR departure. Remember 8 Foxtrot Tango, Waukesha Tower, hold short runway 10, awaiting IFR release. Hold short 10, Cessna 8 Foxtrot Tango. The tower needs to coordinate our departure with the Tracon, Milwaukee Departure. They'll talk to them on what's called the landline, and when Milwaukee determines the airspace is open for our departure, they'll let Tower know that and relay any other additional instructions for us. This is very similar to what happens at a non-towered airport, where we have to call approach ourselves to coordinate a release, only now the Tower acts as a middleman. Cessna Foxtrot Tango, fly heading 350, runway 10, clear for takeoff. Fly heading 350, runway 10, clear for takeoff, Cessna Foxtrot Tango. We've likely just been given what's known as a diverse vector for departure. Many towered airports where obstructions aren't too big a concern allow controllers to assign a vector to departing aircraft, even though we're obviously below the minimum vectoring altitude. When this is the case, the assigned vector 350 assures us obstacle clearance as long as we maintain standard climb gradients or whatever was called for in the takeoff minimums we looked at. There are some exceptions to this obstacle clearance, but we won't examine them in depth here. So we'll taxi out onto the runway for takeoff. This is where we'll leave off for this video. The next video, which you can head over to the website now and see, will cover the departure, climb out, and en route portions of the flight as we make our way west to Eau Claire. Click the link here or in the description to go see the full flight series. See you there.